Hey, what's going on everybody? It's Three Bands coming at you and I have a really special treat for you today. And really what I want to do is I just want to talk to you like I would anybody else if I was sharing with them information about a book just so they would know like, hey, do I think they should get this book? What do I think about this book? And did I gravitate to this book? So on and so forth, you know, no, no fuss or muss. Uh, this is just my impressions and what I think, you know, straightforward with you. This book is From Soul to Soul. It's a book by Jason Coles about Jacques Sassine. Uh, first off, thanks to Adidas for allowing access not only to their archive, but, you know, supporting this book. And also to Rizzoli for being the publishers who, you know, stepped forward and was able to produce some of the financing for it. Uh, but getting aside from that, um, you know, for me, when I collect shoes, I collect stories. It's not necessarily just about that shoe. You know, I gravitate to those moments in my life when I was on the school bus wearing my Run DMC shoes without shoes strings and it, it takes me back to that point in my life so when I started collecting shoes whether it was forums or whether it was superstars that was the story that I remember now for me the overall first impressions of this book when I got it in was first just the overall scope and size of this book I didn't know what to expect so when I got it in the mail I, I don't know if you can see just how big this book is and how dense it is so my first impressions were when I just flipped through it and didn't read one word of it was Oh my gosh, I had absolutely no idea that there were this many shoes associated with one person. And with talking with Jason, he said, you know, they actually had to pick and narrow down the number of projects that were on there. And the reason they did is they did not want, and which I love this, they did not want to create an encyclopedia of shoes, which I respect a lot because I'm not collecting shoes just to have a bunch of pair of shoes. I collect the stories in the shoes and that's what I gravitate to. So when he shared that piece of, piece of it with me, I was like so this really isn't a book about shoes although the shoes are an important character in this book it's the story of the man and it's those little bitty stories that I gravitate to that when I did start reading the forward and the introduction it kept me curious and it kept me reading from from one detail to the next detail to so on and so forth because you know for me <clears throat> I don't know about you but when I was in school I hated reading textbooks that were just fact-based but when I had a story and I could find some excitement and something that I could identify with then I was trapped into it so I'm just gonna get in and what I'm gonna do with this book is I just want to show you just how beautiful the book is I want to go through it and I want to you know just share and showcase with you some of the shoes that Jacques has been a part of I'll share some of my thoughts on just a few of them that I can identify with all of them I'm not familiar with there's a bunch of runners in here that I have you know no experience with but I'm gonna go through and show you those because I know whether you're a football player whether you're a basketball player whether you're a tennis player or whether you're a runner and there's just millions of runners around the world you're gonna have a time in your life that you can remember and gravitate to so it would be so much fun to pick up this book and see kind of you know where those stories came from so we're just going to jump in of course you see this is the 1984 patent pending form I just thought it would be appropriate for this shot coming in uh, because it was you know such a significant shoe but just going to put this to the side and what we're going to do is we're just going to open up the book now the cover of the book this is it right here just a beautiful cover from soul to soul there it is and of course it has the forum on there and the book itself right here has this this a beautiful blue adidas logo it's really really cool and you'll see that that's from the forum and going in to this it's going to have all the chapters now what i really think is super super nice and how they organized this again it's not an encyclopedia they did it in a timeline and they color coded it so you can kind of look at the shoe that you identify with again there's so many different projects that you're going to want to find the one that you identify with and you'll be able to flip to it and read the history so i thought first first off and foremost nice job on that and then they have the Ford. The Ford was written by Peter Moore. Uh, if you don't know, Peter Moore is the one that developed the Jordan 1 for Michael Jordan. You know, one of the biggest and most, you know, in-demand shoes still to this day that commands the most money. Just an incredible story in itself, how it came about. And just knowing, you know, Jacques' story and how he provided the inspiration coming from the Forum. And the Forum going into the... Uh, Jordan one that it is right now. It's just a really neat story I'm not going to share the details of it because the details are in the book So if you want to know that story just jump in and find it, you know, so that's one of the neat things about it uh, I will say that it's an incredible story I had no idea about it and when I learned about it I was just tickled to death to be honest with you the introduction written by Jason Coles. Jason Coles is the author. He's the one that put the book together. Uh, just an amazing guy who's able to capture the life of someone and organize it into a book and make it digestible. One thing about 
now that it's exciting to have this book together is that when I was out researching my forums or my rivalries or my Run DMC shoes, out there in the information, there's just not a whole lot out there. Even when you say, oh, we've got the World Wide Web and we can have everything we want at our fingertips. That's not so true when you're looking to figure out the real part of history or if you really just seek to understand something. And even when I looked for Jacques Chassin, I only saw some very, very small articles and they didn't give, they didn't give me much information. So now to have it all together, it gives me a good sense of the man and it also gives me a good sense of the scope of the work. So it's just beautiful to have this and it's beautiful to have this sitting on my desk now or in my other collection of books that I can go to and pick it up and see. So just really, really cool. What I will share with you are just a couple of little stories from what I just read in the first few you know, pages of the book and why I say that this is a book that you'll want to read because the stories in there, what I gravitated to, it wasn't I picked this book up again, it was just a bunch of random shoes posted, which I have you know, no interest in buying a book of shoes. But this is, and I'm gonna pronounce this wrong, this is Badaville, uh, and this is where Jacques started. Uh, this is, you know, it says 1971 to 81. But the deal is that when you started here at Bada, started in the Czech Republic, they had different factories. Uh, the factories actually provided, it was more than just a job. This was at a time in the era of the late 1800s when a job wasn't a job that now we just go and we move to this job and we go to this job. It's just how it is. Everything is very, very uh, interchangeable. At this point, uh, this company, not only did they provide a job and a career for the life of that person, they also had the, they provided the boarding for it, they provided, they had the stores, they had the schools, they had everything that went along with it. So they were really invested in their people. That's where, when we think about where Adi Dassler came from and investing in his people and the players, that's where that kind of philosophy, philosophy grew from. So he started at Bada, and what you had to do is you had to spend so many months going to all the different parts of the factory in the different processes and after I think it was like a year sorry if I got that wrong they would assess how you were in all of those and depending on what your talents were that's how you would find the niche so you wouldn't be stuck like railroaded into one job you would get this amazing experience to go through and try all these different parts of this company and get exposure to it all so you wouldn't just be that person in an office I think all of you can identify with not knowing what the whole corporation's doing and you're just feeling like you're a guy here typing away or selling a product whatever the case may be but in this way the company really invested in its people and you got to see every part of the organization and find out where it fit so that's that story in itself just knowing that companies did that that was just very interesting to me so to know that that's how he started his career and to share that experience was really really cool and then from go to that then it goes into the factory where he started working for adidas and when he started for working for adidas in france that's when he started designing all of his shoes what i love about it is he was telling the story of how he was more of a problem solver and how they went to the united states and they had their shoes and the germans had their shoes and the americans said we like the you know the french shoes better and you know he was all worried it was just you know it's just a fun story to hear how you know when you're starting off in your career you know you're doing something you, you think it's pretty good but you also think that it may be too good that the other people might shut you down and you know he had those same fears and those same worries so that was just really cool uh, Stan Smith there and again as I'm opening this up I just kind of want you to see now it, sure it has a lot of uh, great stories in it but at the same time I do appreciate since I I do love shoes all these gorgeous photographs and, and every page is just full of all these little bitty details that I had no idea about and there he is Jacques Chassin and then we go into, I'm sorry, not Jock, but Adi Dossler. And the reason that this is there, that I thought this was super cool, is because Adi Dossler's philosophy, and what I really didn't know, again, I've, I've been on the web and I've uh, been able to get you know bits and pieces about Adi, uh, some good and some bad, but the reality of it was, when it came down to it, he had to be doing something right. Um, his philosophy was just to make the best shoe, you know, for the athlete, to make the athlete superior. Everything else came second. That was just the, the main goal. You know, outside of that, there was the essence of the shoe that communicated the beautiful design philosophy that made them timeless. 
but the whole point of the shoe was to be the absolute best shoe that, that you could provide for the athlete. That was his intention from along and that's what made him so successful. This is one of the uh, first inspirations, the 9.9, and I'm not into track at all or into running at all, but I, I love the fact that how this shoe, you can just look at this shoe and immediately when I saw it, I was like, well, there's not much there. Um, well, that's because it's made to fit the shoe, I mean your foot like a glove and just to wrap around it, even though these X's in the back, everything is made to make the athlete faster, to keep it lighter, and even how these spikes were done. So I just thought that was really cool. And there, there is Jacques' scene right there. Going into the forum, uh, I have several forums. So me, I love the forum. I love the idea behind the forum and how Michael Jordan was wearing it, how it was developed for the 1984 uh, Olympics and how they were trying to make a better shoe because the shoes at the time, you know, the players were having to wrap all their ankles. And, stuff. and again, I'm not going to go into it, but just so you know, if you have forums out there, I know there are a ton of people like me out there that love forums, the story behind it and how Michael Jordan was wearing them. That's just really, really cool. Again, I want to share with you a story of why I think this book is just so incredible is you know I can relate to Jacques Sassine because it, it tells the story of when he went to Chicago and he had a layover in in New York and they got stranded in this blizzard and he didn't you know he didn't know what to do at the time you know people that created things they aren't just naturally rich off the get you know you have to work for what you have so he's stuck in this airport uh, Air France gave him some vouchers he ended up you know overnight or whatever it was in the airport and then finally he got a room in downtown New York and then while he was in downtown New York, again, just a beautiful, just a beautiful silhouette, right? Uh, oh, there's Jordan. Oh, got to backtrack. If you want to know more about Jordan, Peter Moore, there it is. Boom. Incredible, right? Look at that. But this picture, this blizzard, and this is when he was locked, when he was stuck in his room and he went out and they were, and, and right down in downtown New York, they were skiing down the street. And he's like, you know, what the hell? I'm going to make the most of my time there. And he just, you know, went out and enjoyed his day. And that was, you know, one of the little details that I just thought was super cool. So now I'm just going to continue to go through the book. And so that's the pick there on the forum. Now, what's the other really neat that I found really cool about it? There's so many people impacted in our sneaker culture. Again, whether it's me that collect Adidas or it's you that collect Jordan or if you're just a runner in general uh, or an athlete in general, all these people and whether it's hip hop culture, whether it's uh, going to be athletic culture or pop culture, he has all these interviews with people and what, you know, he has meant to them. So that's just really cool that people would even step up and say, hey, this is for real, that guy and share their little Little bit of story about it so that's really dope that he did that then it goes into the zx line of shoes which just is kind of ridiculous to be honest with you all the different variations of the zx and how you know at the time you know uh shoes the running shoes there wasn't a whole lot of technology behind them you know they were just mainly made for comfort and not necessarily for support and they just started this whole line of running shoes which is just really cool so you've got all the different variations if you've ever wondered right there if you're a runner, you're just going to be in heaven with that. And it goes to this page four uh, into tennis. There you are, Ivan Lindell and his shoes. Again, if you're a tennis player, you're going to love reading that. There's a story about that as well and the shoe and how the shoe evolved. Then going into Run DMC. So many of you out there are into hip hop and into hip hop culture or into street culture. And synonymous with hip hop culture, you know, some of the OGs out there are gonna be Run DMC. To just see his part in that is just insane. So there it is, Run DMC. And of course I have quite a few of the Run DMC shoes. You see them kind of scattered around me again. This isn't a video a review on shoes. It's just showing you, again, a part of my life that this is important to me. I mean, this is just super cool to actually learn. Again, on the internet, I reached out and I was trying to find out, you know, how they got with Adidas. But to come in here and actually hear the real details about it and to see the design of the shoes was really cool for me. Another uh, piece at the front that, you know, I thought was uh, just really, you know, I thought that was really, really dope is this shoe, this autograph picture. And then they had all the different variations of it. And it, again, you know, it's just it's just fun to see all these. Then it comes in here, Gary Aspen. Gary Aspen talks about, you know, uh, his contribution as well. Again, all throughout this book, you're going to see that. Then the secret right here. I love this because it has a picture of the superstar. 
And the thing about it is if you think about shoes that are made, they're, I mean, there are literally thousands of variations and through the 70s and 80s, you know, again, maybe thousands, but at least hundreds. So many of the models, they come and they go, maybe they are even only produced for one year. Some of the those stand the test of time, like the Forum, like the Ravelry, the Top 10, and of course the running shoes. And again, you know, the Superstar. These designs, not only do they serve a function, but they become part of our culture. Stefan Edinburgh. Then it goes into the Ewing collection. Again, so many of you out there are going to be really, really this dope, dope. I'm just like, what? You know, to see the real story about the Ewing collection and all, and just to hear firsthand about it and to see the conductor and how it came evolved and, and, and the story behind it. Again, you know, this isn't a, it's not just saying, hey, this is the shoe that was released at this time. This is the real story, you know? This is a fun story. Uh, this is one of the collectors, Arnie Beckman, and his insane, you know, looks like a, a shoe shop, right? But no, those are all his shoes. And what's really cool about it is you can kind of just see all the different variations of it. And, you know, these gorgeous pictures of the breakdowns of it. Then there's the rivalry. A lot of you out there wear the rivalry, right? And again, Julia Schroeder. And, and you know, look at that. But I'm not going to have time to go through all the detail, but this book is loaded with people. If you're an athlete or if you're a collector or whatever kind of sports you're into, you're going to find somebody that you can identify and they're going to share something about Jacques Chassin. I thought it was really, really, you know, I'm just going to say this. You know, so much out there of information that's put out there is so, even when you think, oh, this is the truth about how like the Jordan came about or how Adidas came about or our Puma and Adidas rivalry, a lot of it out there is so filtered and it's controlled. What I enjoy about this is that Joxacene is pretty straightforward. He's just told it like it is. In this book, Jason Coles is very committed to that as well. So the things that you are gonna are read in this book are going, gonna be the real deal. So I appreciated that. I also appreciated that they put Horst Dassler in there because because uh, Horst Dassler does go unnoticed, uh, doesn't get the recognition that he deserves. But you know, let me tell you, at some point he will. And once we get to hear this gentleman's story, uh, you're going to be amazed as well. But just so so thrilled that that's in there. Going on to the next one, the competition, and it goes into that. The Rod Lavar shoe, another tennis shoe, the Torsen number nine. Look at all these different variations. I mean, it's just, this is, uh, you know, kind of overwhelming. Kind of overwhelming. Here we go, another one. Alexand Alexandre Bloom. Probably pronounced that wrong. Cool name, though. The shoes. We go into, let's get to this next one. 10, Thunder and Lightning. Okay. Strafer and Jacques Chassin. Okay, powerhouses. Again, if you want to know the real story, uh, these two guys are powerhouses of the sneaker industry. And again, right here, you don't have to go searching anywhere. You can just open up the book, and here's the story. Really, really dope. Really, really dope. Keep going through. Again, just want to show you the book. Adidas Equipment, part of that brand as well. Going to the Gazelle and the Originals line. Kind of missed that first page. Adidas Originals. Here we go again, 10, the tubular, oh, 13, I'm sorry, 14, the predator, dope, right? Going in, I'm gonna show you 15 now. Boom, <laughs> that's just so cool. That's just cool, EQT, EQT, I'm sorry. Chris Law. Uh, Chris Law, you've heard me do many, many shoe reviews uh, and about Chris's Law contribution and all the different shoes he had. And again, here it is, Chris Law, another pioneer and just a, a legend in the sneaker community, you know, giving his two cents. So all these people, all the work that went into just getting, you know, it's not just, hey, I went to the archive and I took a bunch of pictures. Uh, Christopher Bazoo, you know, it's just, it, it's insane. Like you're gonna pick up this book and no matter again who you are or what you are, you're going to see something in here for you. Going into 17, the Porsche design part of it. Keeping on going. Just dope stuff. Then going into 18, ZX 10,000C. 
Jock again. And then Jason Coles, and this is kind of where he ends it off. And again, I took the time to go through there and I wanted to do that just so hopefully you're going through here and you're looking at it and you go, hey, that's a shoe I identify with. That's somebody I know, so you can go to it. Now in the beginning, when I shared to you the little bitty stories about him being stuck in the airport and getting his start and, be, and working at Bada and having to learn all the different crafts of his trade before he got into what he did and then whether it's Michael Jordan or whether it's where you know the form and how it came about or it's the evolution of the running shoe which you know he is called the father of the modern running shoe everything is in here and what I appreciate this is his honesty uh, being very straightforward and the fact that it was not built like an encyclopedia this is a book that I pick up you know when I read books I want to pick it up and find something interesting about it so I don't want to put it down just like when I'm going to a movie you know I want to go watch a movie I want it to be you know I want it to have have highs and I want it to have lows and that just takes a great author to be able to put that together so not only do we have Jason Coles put together a book but he did it in a way that's entertaining and it keeps you captivated so it moves forward so just another shout out uh, Jacques is seeing of course this book is about you but more importantly as I know just from talking to Jason Coles he didn't want this book to be about him he wanted it to be about all these people and his work and how he was just you know really humble to be a part of all this and he was really even you know humble to share his story uh, it wasn't once something that he was seeking out to do. Uh, you know, people sought him out to do, specifically Jason uh, sought him out to share his story. And um, I'm so glad he did. So not, not, now only do I not know so much more, uh, I know so much more about the shoes that helped change my life and the stories that mean everything to me in the world. So thank you for everybody involved in this book. Thank you for Jacques. Thank you for Jason for sending it to me. Again, Adidas, um, you know, for being supportive behind this and making, making this book and giving them the levity to be transparent about the things that they were in this book. Until next time, as you know, collect what you love and I gravitate to anything with a story.